The best kind of doors are the doors you have to explain. Welcome to Unhinged. Today, we do have a very special nerd. Gary, hopefully it's okay I call you a nerd or I guess right Gabby. Yeah. All right, you ready for the next one? I'm ready. This one actually has some commentary. Nathan came to these doors and asked, why do you need card readers on these doors? The customer said, oh, those are file rooms with clients information. Then Nathan replies, oh, why are the keys left in the handset then? Mm -hmm. And the customer said, oh, so our staff can get access to it when I'm not here. Nathan was said, oh. <laughs> Spoiler alert, the light switch switches off the electric strikes. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna ignore the keys. I think we're going to ignore the keys here because we just went over keys. Yeah. I have a love-hate relationship with these doors. If I see this, I'm super excited because I know I can get in almost instantly. Those strike blades are so wobbly that you can pull those back with like a traveler's hook and the dead latch will slip right inside and then you can just bypass the door every time. I have yet to see one of these work the way that they're supposed to work. Not that they can't, but I have yet to see it in the wild, in a door that's used every day. These are the worst things on the planet as far as security. That's number one. You have to have the right faceplate for the strike the door has to be perfectly installed which never happens and even then you can throw a wedge in there to give it enough play to let it fall into the Look, strike i've never seen those strike plates not have play in them i mean they literally have to wiggle like where's the camera like that much and then the death latch will fall in from the latch every time the rfid readers you guys know what the Wigan protocol is? I'm sure a lot of our viewers don't know. If yeah, you it's just, so you've got your card reader there, the RFID reader. And what happens is, is you take your, man, I, I even think I've got, look at this. See, I mean, I've got all sorts of cards here, right? That's what the inside of a card looks like. It's an antenna with a little chip in it. And so when you get it close to that reader, it electrifies this and then it reads the card and it tells you the number on the card, right? It's just your secret passcode to, to get into the door. And so if you have a fancy card and the card is encrypted, that just means that I can't come by with this and everybody can buy these now. These are terrible for the world. It makes my job easier though. So I can come by with this and I can go boop and then I can read your card and now I have access to your entire building just with that. But it prevents that kind of. You can still read it and it's still encrypted and then I can go back and I can crack the encryption because uh, the HI the encryption has already been cracked so i can still read it and it's one of the only cards that people use that are encrypted in the first place but it doesn't matter because somebody like me gets a hold of it we decrypt it and then we've got the card anyway so it doesn't really matter so you get these rfid readers and you go like this and you go boop and then it reads it at the RFID reader. But here's the thing is after it reads it, it's all just ones and zeros. It sends everything on the back in clear text, everything. So it doesn't really matter even if your card was encrypted because after the reader reads it, it sends the protocol sends it in clear text. So those, those RFID readers usually have a single screw in the bottom. That's it. It's one. And you can say, well, it's a security screw. Okay, well, I just go to Walmart and buy the security screw set pack and I can unlock your secure. Like one of the biggest scams in history are security screws, right? We're going to make security screws to make it where nobody can get into this thing because it's secure. And then we're going to turn around and we're going to sell all the bits for it so people can get into it no matter what. So you just take some silly putty and you stick it up underneath there and you look and you're like, oh, look at that. It's a Phillips because most of them are. And so you take that out and then you've got the wires back behind it. And then you just vamp clip this on right here it's called an esp key and so this esp key just has data in data out power and ground that's it and you can see right there the van clips and so you put that in back behind and you literally just get your punch and you just punch it down i've seen people install these in 30 seconds and then you put it back on the wall and you put your single screw back in and you walk away and then you come back the next day and because this also has wi-fi on it right oh, it has a wi-fi chip on it <laughs> Yeah, there's a Wi-Fi chip on it. So you don't even have to ever go back in and retrieve it if you don't want to. But uh, yeah, you just come back and then you can download every card that was used on that reader for that day. Uh, well, you know, ad nauseum and since it was installed. And not only can you do that, but you can turn around and you can open the door with your phone. And so you see, well, what if, right? Let's play the what if game. Let's say this RFID reader had a pin code on it. And so it was dual authentication. It doesn't matter. It's all in weekend on the back end anyway. So you just turn around and now on your phone, not only do you have the card, but you have the pin code next to the card so you just say replay and then it swipes the card and then types the pin code in for you and then the door opens but wait
great. What if there's a retinal scanner? Yeah, guess what? Doesn't matter if you've got your handprint. Doesn't matter if they're scanning your iris. It's all weakened on the back end. That will work on everything. If you can get to the back and you can get in there and you can get to it somehow, then you're just intercepting the data from the reader to the, you know, the, the processing board or whatever they happen to have it connected to. And you can get into anything. You can replay it. It's just code 006513. That's a right code. It goes into our machine. Okay, let's open up the door and let you in. Lots of problems with RFID. <laughs> So that's with the Wigan reader. So OSDP. OSDP that. fixes that. How many times have you seen it? <laughs> it's I've seen it zero times in the wild. It exists. Uh, I know it's there. And that's what we tell people to do. It's actually, it used to be really expensive to switch things over to the OSDP. And now they've got something that I think they can just flash stuff now and put the OSDP on it. And it's so much simpler and so much easier. But, you know, give it time. We'll hack that too. I'm sure. I think there was even a vulnerability that was discovered not that long ago with OSDP. And they're already working on revamping it. Crazy stuff. But you wouldn't even need any of that because you already have access to, to the keys. <laughs> you have the keys, but it's almost easier to go through the strike. But you also have the skimmer for the yeah. information to get through all the other doors. But if you're here and this is clients' files and information, like you can do a lot of damage with that information right there. The fact yeah. that they even mentioned client, that means there's some serious information in there. Let's say that the strike plates work and you can't get in that way. And let's say they're using OSDP on their readers. And let's say those keys aren't there. You still have like a gap large enough to drive a truck through underneath and you got ADA compliant handles. So you can just throw your under the door tool in there and open it in about 30 seconds if you're slow. And I can also so almost bet that above here is probably drop down ceiling. So you could just move the tile and jump over the door as well. Most likely if it's an office setting. You find the under door tools are harder if there's no return on the lever on the end, like how it comes back towards the door. There's ways around it. Yes, it is more difficult. Absolutely. Because it doesn't hook as nicely for there. And we find a door like that. I usually just take some duct tape and put one thing around it and then spin the duct tape around and then make it sticky. And then it mm. sticks to the door. There's also, you remember when you were kids, they got that stuff stuff that you throw against the wall, like the hand, and it would stick to the wall. Oh, well, they've got this stuff like that that's smooth on the inside and sticky on the outside. You can actually take those and put that on your thing and that'll stick to almost anything. So it makes it harder, but it's, you know, eh. My engineer mind is working yeah. to create <laughs> levers. Do you know one of the easy ways to fix that is just put a rolled up towel in the door in the back side, and then you can't get on it with the under the door tool. Yeah. I've seen that with like hotel locks and stuff like that. If oh, yeah. you were out Every time. getting access or you heard about the, a hotel manager that was like licking people's toes. No, no, I didn't hear that one, but I, I trust you. Because the hotel staff has access to your room, whether yep. you like it or not. And if they give access to someone else, which is very simple to get, there's a lot of concerns, but that's hospitality. That's a whole nother episode there, Gary, I'm sure. Yeah, your hotel room is not safe. Neither is your hotel safe. Even you're not, safe. Not once have I ever used a hotel safe. Okay, knocking score. What do you think on this one? I mean, if the other one was a catastrophic, this has got to be a catastrophic. The, the key's in the door. It is an interior door. We'll give it that way. So based on the exterior, this may only be half catastrophic. This might only be critical? Well, no, it's still catastrophic, but I'd say half of a catastrophic, not a full catastrophic. Yeah, I was having that debate myself of like, it's an interior door, but there are client files behind here, which mm -hmm. makes it... Still catastrophic. Yes, more <laughs> catastrophic than just a wedding venue key yeah we might need another something Catastroph about catastrophic maybe <laughs> Another level of rating. Yeah. <laughs> this one slammed so hard it knocked it off the hinge. Okay. So I guess it's a 10 for security or above that, whatever that rating is. I just the keys make it that, I would say. But yeah, and those strike plates are terrible. It's definitely a 10. It's a catastrophic. There's no doubt about it. It's a catastrophic, <laughs> even if it's an injury. <laughs> say it was a wealth management firm and you were worth, oh, I don't know, $15 million because wealth management firms, I don't know if people are aware of this, but wealth management firms are like your own little private secretary when it comes to your finances. They have the deed to your house. They have the deed to your car. They have the deed to your yacht. They have the deed to everything and they control everything for you because, you know, when you're super rich, you don't have to worry about stuff. And so I can't tell you how many wealth management firms that I've been into that's something like this. And behind they're like, oh, those are our clients' documents. You mean your client's deed to their $5 million boat? Is that what you mean by client document? They're like, well, yes, but we need to be able to get to that stuff when I'm not there. It's like, dude, what part of $5 million boat did you miss? Like, why do you have a key there? And then like, that's just one client. And you know, a wealth management firm, you've got thousands of clients and you have all of their stuff. 
If you want to be featured on a future episode of Unhinged, or if you have a picture to submit, you can email me at mia at doorhardwarenerds.com. Thanks for watching.